This channel is not intended for children. Please kickstart responsibly. Hey everybody, so it's another big old crazy week of all kinds of stuff. Uh, the first was on a Friday, so maybe some of the campaigns didn't come out then. So now we are up to 65. I am crossing my fingers and hoping I'll be able to get done with this whole episode before an hour goes by. But that's an, just under a minute per campaign. It's kind of hard to reach, but that's just how it goes. We just have a lot of things that people are interested in. They're coming out with spring breaks going on. Easter's coming up. People getting paid a little bit. So things are going on, hopefully, in the right direction. Uh, I thought of a fun thing we could do to, if we could get like Dolph Lundgren and Jean-Claude Van Damme and maybe some of the other Expendables. But we have the Expendables board game edition. And then we hire all those actors to take a convoy of trucks and take them from China where the warehouses are all impacted by shutdowns and have them all drive to Vietnam and send it from Vietnam since that's the closest country nearby that wouldn't be affected necessarily. Make a movie and, a, you know, get all the games and stuff out of uh, China jail. I think that would be funny. All right, let's get to it. First up, we have an empty throne, and this one's a little bit different. Usually you have a card game about being an adventurer, and this is more about being someone who stays put. So this is about being a leader of an existing, uh, I don't know, duchy or kingdom or whatever the case uh, is. And two players only. Um, as you go through it, it has this uh, interesting art look to it. It looks a little bit like the Darkest Dungeon aesthetic with a little bit um, smaller lines. But still that kind of kind of appeal. And yeah, it could be a lot of fun. I don't see any other way to play it right away, but you can give it a shot and see if you like it. It's all cards, so hopefully it won't take too much to get it all shipped. Then we have Villain versus the Game. And the idea is it is supposed to be um, a little bit like a uh, true crime mystery that you're going to be collecting the evidence that's on these cards. And if we scan down... You'll see that there's different things that you could collect, um, villains that you could go against. They have different point values. And this is another one that uses historical people. And I think that that's bad. <laughs> I think that that actually hurts sales. Uh, if you just think of an interesting person, then these entirely recognizable people that you may not want to keep um, in your home, the pictures of them, you might think that glorifying them is a problem and uh, you don't want to have their photos at home. Uh, having cryptids and stuff like this, maybe that works a little easier because they're not necessarily real, but when you actually see the face of evil, there's a reason why you might be turned off by it. The same thing is when uh, they were having the serial killer playing cards um, that came out, they weren't going to be a huge seller. So I think maybe if they had just implemented some more creativity and created characters uh, that were just as bad and maybe still did the same things as those awful people or even just hired an artist instead of using publicly available photos, I understand it makes things cheaper, but uh, it also makes things a little too real in the home. And I think that's the reason why more people aren't jumping on the game, because otherwise it might be a fun detective game, which does sell pretty well. Uh, for example, Slay. This is a game that's also got some murder going on. Uh, you can see someone that looks similar to Ghostface from Scream. And um, it's stylized. You have these different characters. And it looks cartoony. But you're still going to be playing basically a murder simulator. For three to six players as students trying to escape serial killers. Very much the same feel. However, this one you might be more inclined to bring into your home because of that... Um, artistic change that allows you to have what is a stylized group of uh, also psychos. And, you know, drag face, uh, which I guess is scream uh, is ghost face, but uh, as a, a drag performer. Um, and Fred Chukrit, I don't know, whatever Chukrit is, but instead of Kruger. So they're, they're playing around with it a little bit. It's something familiar. But it's not something that is too familiar. It, you know, it hits that, uh, it jumps over the uncanny valley into acceptable range. Then we have another very popular 
system or another popular type of game and that's trains this is 1888 north china so we have the middle kingdom getting itself some railroads english and german rules and let's see if we can get around there it is an 18xx type game uh so you can see you're also going to be dealing with market values and um, things that you're hauling which is pretty familiar in this type of system i don't know if there's anything else yeah you can see there are add-ons for other 18x games that uh, you might want to pick up which is always nice if you're going to have a rule system that's so popular that it has its own uh, collective name to be able to pick up more content to go along with it you know right off the bat already almost at its goal so that's a good sign that they'll probably double or triple that and uh, it means there's a healthy community here we have Bonnie and Clyde love and death and the day they died is actually my birthday not in the same year but same day um, yeah it's a weird one I have share a birthday with Drew Carey Seabiscuit the horse and uh, the Bonnie and Clyde dying. There's nothing else really on my <laughs> birthday that's all that memorable. Uh, you can pick up uh, different aspects of them as they're on the run, and you have different. Uh, uh, there's tabletop simulators, so if you wanted to play it for yourself, you can check it out. But uh, you're you're basically following along on the run, and that's kind of a neat way to role play. Uh, as you play through it and I mean they changed a lot they were icons of crime and fashion and you know great story that people enjoyed and all kinds of stuff so I mean if it made it all the way to France then uh, you know just this couple of people that were ne'er-do-wells uh, somehow becoming a uh, um, an icon of many other things even though they didn't exactly end well <laughs> um, you know it's a, it's an interesting story that might make for a great game. <clears throat> then we got some custom meeples for Mall Peak. This is a two-player game, as they say, with epic meeple meeples. So you have like the Hydra, Tarantula, all these uh, kaiju-looking individuals. And Skulk Hollow appears to be the first game in the series. So you have a cartoony appeal of uh, these anthropomorphic animals, I think, are your and protagonists. And these are the folks that you're going to play. Um, all the different colors represented of this ice world, I guess, of some, uh, some kind, where the kaiju monsters run around. You get a bunch of free solo things, different mini expansions to go along with it. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, you know, for those of you that like two-player games, um, it, you're going to be playing the Grizzar or uh, one of these other characters and maybe fighting against each other. So uh, the fun, I guess, would be switching and seeing who plays better. Uh, you can get the different rules. You can play the first game. Let me see if there's anything down here extra. There's no tabletop simulator or anything like that because Skulk Hollow already exists, and you can watch people play it. Uh, as far as, yeah, you can get both games if you wanted to, if this appeals to you. So that covers it for the most part. Here's another fun type of game that a lot of people like to play. A lot of these were phone-based a few years ago, so now I guess they're just going back to apps. This is uh, Silicon Valley, and uh, it's about launching a new startup out there in Northern California. So you're going to be building out um, the hires that you take. You're going to be building out, and I guess this Tetris style, uh, the types of things that the, they're good at. <laughs> and... Uh, uh, you're going to have some hidden moves and that kind of fun thing. So I, I guess Tetris becomes your, your code block. And if you're good at that, then maybe you can make these um, various uh, uh, point generating code things for you. So it's a neat idea. Uh, lots of people are moving into that space. We heard today, and congratulations to uh, Adam uh saddler uh i started the channel kind of as a street masters deal and that was their first game with blacklist games and both adam and brady have moved on to other game companies now adam is going to be a phone developer for ios he's going to be he, he spent a lot of the pandemic time learning how to code fell in love with it and then decided that that's where he he wants the the next part of his life to be is in developing things so 
congratulations to him. Good luck to him. And, you know, I guess a lot of people are moving in this direction. Then I think Aldara has been around before, and I'm surprised that they've made such a huge amount of money already. And I think part of that's because they were around before. Uh, I remember seeing these ships, and uh, yeah, it's lots of minis. It's like a sky ship thing if you're into some type of either diesel punk or steampunk that uh, takes place out there in the skies. See, and then there's like a mining corporation, but you don't mine the clouds. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know if mining is the way to go, but it was, I guess, a way to get them to put dwarves into the, the system. Um, but yeah, lots of colors, lots of neat things. Um, seems like a, a fun hex crawler type. Uh, as you take over the land, you can get STL files here, as you can see, of a couple of the ships. So maybe that'll get you to want to jump in. Um, there's some more factions and things that go along with it. Some uh, Cthulhu looking individuals, uh, or they would make great ships if you wanted to run these as part of Spelljammer um, and use them that way. Uh, you have all these, uh, like there's the whale, there's the crabs, there's the manta rays of enormous sizes that you could utilize. So I think these would be pretty fun to print, or, or not print, pretty fun to paint. Uh, so there's some neat pieces that go along with it, even if you wanted to use them for other purposes. Um, yeah. Tabletop simulator, if you wanted to try it for yourself and see what's going on. I'm hoping that, uh, you know, it is a lot of fun because uh, the sculpts and the colors and everything seem like they would be uh, pretty neat to throw out on the board. And um, yeah, it's just good to see that this time around they have enough people that are interested and they're able to make the, the cash they need another two-player game this time for 10 bucks for your wallet size it is about corralling animals it's barnyard and there you have uh you know based on the movement and i guess each one of these cards has a different animal on it and it's the same barn uh look to it okay uh, different expansion if you wanted with other folks to work on the farm so if you wanted to take it with you and you weren't so concerned with it being wallet size you can get yourself a play mat to go along with it too small games can be a lot of fun just depends on who you are and what you got time to play and then we have a semi co-op game this one looks like it might even crack the uh, goal by the time i end the episode legacy of thrax the awakening and you have um a little bit of Euro resource management, a little bit of adventure. You can get this skull for free uh, if you back pretty quickly. And da, 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 da. so if you look at the prototype, I mean, the minis look pretty cool. So it just doesn't look like you're getting a lot of them. It doesn't look like it's that type of game. Uh, a lot of uh, information. There we go. So uh, big board, you're going to be moving around to different regions. And then you have the warrior, engineer. Mage, Shadow is probably a thief of some kind. Yeah, so it's, it's your typical fantasy stuff. 80 bucks gets you in. Um, there are, yeah, wooden cubes in the regular version. Um, and if you were to get the deluxe, then you get all the expen expensive extra pieces and things like that. So I'm going to say similar to what an Awake Awaken Realms game is when you play the fantasy type stuff, Teeny Grail, etc., then uh, you get a story to go along with it. I think that's the move that they're going for here. And I would probably say Teeny Grail is the game closest to this. It's just not the Grail part, but uh, the types of characters as you move around. Maybe it's it's Teeny Grail with Zoloft, <laughs> with some antidepressants. Maybe that's the best way to uh, to describe it uh, with how the, the game is laid out. So you're going to be having those story moments and um, building your characters and all that kind of stuff, as you would expect. But for 80 bucks, it's not a bad price point. Then we have the Quest Kids, which sounds like exactly the same thing that I just described, but on a smaller level, this time a dungeon crawler for heroes five and up. So as long as they're not gonna swallow the pieces, you're probably set. And uh, this might be a fun way to get your kids involved with fantasy ideas, something other than just what they see in cartoons on Disney Channel or Cartoon Network, that kind of thing. So 
if you got them stuck on He-Man, uh, if you got them uh, watching your Dungeons and Dragons uh, DVDs, whatever the case is, then maybe you can play this to get along with them. Thing here is it's 80 bucks, 94 bucks. Like the price points are pretty high for kids games, but I don't have kids, so maybe it's just to me it seems like it'd be super expensive. I know Legos are crazy co cost, but uh, yeah, maybe you could take these characters that they have here and paint them for your kids and make it extra special. Otherwise, it comes with standees uh, to be a little more durable. So that part is, uh, you know, up to you as to how you want to run it. But it's neat to be able to have something you can play with your youngins. And then we have a 110 card mystery deck to add to the Heart of Cthulhu game. That's cool. Father Dagon is the expansion. Artwork looks pretty neat. Uh, it's, uh, you know, it looks a little bit like, um, there are certain, you know, before Columbus sails, before you have photography, before you have a real easy way of describing animals, um, that art style that you would have gotten on old maps, that's the art style that I'm reminded of, uh, here. And since, you know, Lovecraft comes out in the 1920s to 1930s, um, you, I mean, you don't really see anything like his creatures up until then. Uh, Voynich Manuscript, that kind of thing. Uh, you know, it's interesting to see his creatures in that style. So if you like that game from before, maybe you want to try it now and uh, give this a go. Um, it just makes it seem more ancient, which fits in really well with the theme. Then we have Scamperland, the trading card game. And it's about collecting, it says. So uh, trading card games... Um, I say the same thing every time. Uh, it seems to fit within its own uh, theme with the, between the art and what it's supposed to be about, so that part's neat. It's just hard to sell on Kickstarter something that's not complete or is not guaranteed to be complete. Uh, most of the people that come here want everything, so they come here for and they get the rewards when they buy it here. Um, so that's just the mentality. So when you say, oh, you need boosters or that kind of thing, it... It's just a difficult, um, it's a difficult group to sell to. As you can see, there are people that do want this kind of thing. So there's, you know, usually a couple hundred here and there. Um, what is that at 80 backers? It's like 500 bucks a piece ish, just under 500 a piece that they're spending. So people that are, are getting boxes and want a thing, that part's cool. Um, but I would assume that that's mainly like retailers or specific collectors. Then we have Dungeon of Thieves, turn-based card game where you're supposed to steal from each other. Uh, that's neat. Um, the people that I think that they're competing against is Munchkin. And I just don't think there's enough going on on the cards and enough explanation to say how it's different than Munchkin. Um, it might come up with a couple hundred bucks uh, beyond this, and that part's fine. But I'd like to see a little more going on show me how the game is a little more complex because like I say Munchkin's a monster and it's out there and I think a lot of people are already bought into that space so you got to show them how this is going to give them a new or better experience and we have I got that the scavenger hunt on your phone um I mean uh I mean maybe it helps that you can randomize these things but people aren't really going out that much maybe they're easier to get in a city um yeah it's, it's hard to say because if you're already in a city they have organized scavenger hunts that you pay for and then you just run around the city and it's different every time uh if this is just a thing like you trying to be one of those free range parents that <laughs> throws things out and then your kids have to run around and hope that they don't get in trouble that might be a hard one uh, but if you wanted to organize a scavenger hunt you might be able to just find what you would get out of this game online for free so it's hard to say what would be new or what would be different um and if they showed you it then you could just take that list and then run you know what i mean so it's it's a hard way to to, to monetize it out uh if there was some app integration maybe then um and then you know kept people from cheating or uh, a way to integrate to a website that allowed you to store the photo or check in, then I think maybe it would be uh, a lot more successful of a goal. 
Um, otherwise, you know, good luck to them, but it, it's got a lot of competition from free sources. Here's a game that I have not seen. It's just a different theme. So there have been uh, one or two Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu games before, but nobody tried to make it cute Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. So that's a whole new thing. So good for them for coming up with something interesting. This is open mat, ages eight and up, and it's just simple attack defense special. So, uh, you know, just a simple game. If you want to design yourself into the game or your sensei or whatever, then you can pay them to do that. Um, you can play it with friends, buy extra copies. And they have a little bit of social incentives and all that to go to it. So, yeah, I mean, they've found uh, an unserved market <laughs> and good for them for doing that. And uh, hopefully the game is fun. Then we have for Maglev, we have me uh, mechs, monorails, and more six different expansion maps to add to that. So that's why they're doing so darn well. From Bezier Games, they've come out with a few uh, other popular games as well. You have nice customized meeples that have a paint jobs on them. So that helps. That makes it get a little bit better, uh, more affordable. Sorry. Um, it makes it in your mind. think it's a better value proposition. That's what I should have said. Not affordable because it's the same price. Mars, mechs, uh, moon bases, London, somewhere in the future maybe, Paris in the past. And all that kind of cool stuff. So you have lots of different ways to uh, explore what you want to do and create new uh, magnetic levitation train systems. Then we have War on the Seas, but then the sub thing says the battle of all time. But is it a time travel game? It seems to be something about the, the war on the seas. Uh, I got ships, I got missiles, you have CBMs. You can 3D print them out. Um, that's fine. Uh, they have a little bit of instruction here as to uh, how the, the ships and everything work. It seems uh, not quite as in uh, intricate as a lot of the other naval games out there, which is probably for its benefit. And a little more than what you would get in a game of Battleship, which is probably what people want. I think this tagline is just confusing, though. And maybe if they... Uh, added a word or took a, took it all away and just said, hey, strategy game on the high seas or something like that, um, people would be less confused at the first things they, they saw and they'd be more inclined to scroll down and find out more about the game. Two-player games are really big this week for some reason. We have Clash at Rook's Point. This is faction-based. Looks like a fantasy system. Um, there you go. Get different characters. Artwork's okay. You know, I like this one here. Um, let me click in so you can see my mouse. I like this one here, uh, especially. It looks very much like what you would have found in Alter Quest or other similar fantasy games. So, yeah. If that appeals to you, then give it a quick shot. Uh, print Ninja is a print-on-demand system, so that's how they're doing it. And let me see if there's any way to play it ahead. There is not, but you can give it a shot if you want. So I wasn't sure where to put this one. This one's Delver. It's a card game, so that's why I put it here. So it's just like an, any other RPG that you would play as part of a uh, dungeon crawl. Um, but they're trying to make it seem more uh, tabletop RPG-like as opposed to board game-like or card game-like. Uh, you have all the same classes you would typically, typically get. Warlocks look like they have familiars. Everybody else seems to be uh, the standard class. Four to seven players, um, which is, I guess, standard if you have uh, a party um, of four players, as uh, what a lot of adventures are tuned to. And your initial buy-in, print and play, 10 bucks, 35 bucks if you wanted to play it otherwise. So, um, yeah, you decide if it's an RPG or if it's a card game one way or another, but basically it's a fantasy experience using cards. And then we have Improv for Gamers. So this is a book trying to describe uh, different methods of storytelling and uh, having fun with each other. And this is on GameFound. You can get the other products that go along with it, hardcovers, uh, workbooks, all that kind of stuff. So basically discussing ways 
maybe to be a YouTuber <laughs> or have your own uh, uh, system or have your own like uh, really nice, I don't know, back and forths uh, as you role play with each other. These are all the different folks maybe you've seen, maybe you haven't seem to be part of the contributions to the ideas here in the game. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I haven't had any improv training, but I know a lot of people who have, and I think that they've found their lives better for it to be able to think better on their feet and maybe that works. So if you like it, go to game found and find out. Then we have loot brutes card game for horribly greedy people. Another comparison to Munchkin three to five players, all the same. Uh, types of stuff that you would need from Munchkin and you'll be taking turns drawing loot and trying to get the best stuff I guess so it's in the uh, just take out all the the action parts and then throw out the divvying of loot and that's where the game lives from the look of it then we have another game found one it's you kind of rare that we find two game founds at the time this is master dater it's a dating game for weirdos and uh i don't know if they made a card for me in there but it sounds like i should be um you're gonna have traits you're gonna have tops and bottom cards uh to create the uh person that you're going to be and yeah there's some extra stuff you can get you can get the small one or you get the big one and i don't know what the uncut one is but not interested in big love, but still want to get down and dirty. Oh, so there you go. <laughs> uh, yeah, it seems like a, what was a guess who or, or mystery date or something like that? It uh, looks like a card version that's been updated to be uh, extra wacky. Then we have a pirate game for 19 euros, but free shipping. So that's cool. You're going to be stealing from each other, two to eight players. And that's the point, I guess. You can download the rules and then... Uh, I guess you're going to be pirate version of Exploding Kittens, maybe, is is kind of the theme that it goes with. Um, if you're going to be taking sets from each other and there's a bomb somewhere in the, in the stack, then that to me seems like Exploding Kittens, which is a fun game. Then we have Critter Cards. So you have a bunch of fantasy type creatures. It's supposed to be for ages uh, 3 to 9. Um, I don't know that the kids will be able to read if they're three years old, all the stuff that's on there, but maybe they'll recognize the numbers and, um, yeah, I guess you compete for the values that are, uh, on each thing, I guess. I don't know. And then, you know, if you're, you stack them up and you add them together, then you become a more powerful, powerful person. Um, yeah. So it seems simple counting. And uh, fairly uh, benign fantasy artwork. So, yeah. If this appeals to you, I mean, the artwork might even appeal to adults. But uh, you can get an art book to go along with it if that's how you you enjoy it. It looks to me, I don't know if you guys ever played American McGee's Alice or any other American McGee stuff. His later um, fairy tale type games uh, from his Spicy Horse brand, that's what the artwork reminds me of. That kind of style. Then we have Game Stormers. It says it's a perfect card game for game designers. Hard part, there's way fewer designers than game, game players out there. Uh, it's a tableau builder for three to six people about designing games. Uh, I think that's the point of it. Um, you know how like a lot of movies are based on people that are making movies? <laughs> so it's kind of a, a cheap way to find your way into a piece of art is to just use your own experience so they're creating narratives and that's all neat but basically they are using the activity of designing games the challenge of designing games as the reason to play i don't know uh i think that maybe it will be fun and maybe it'll be cool but i don't think it's a thing that you lead with or you sell with Except if you are at a game developer conference or you are looking to be sold at the student store for a like Full Sail or one of the other schools that does um, game design. But maybe it'll work for them. And you can get uh, 
This is six months of Tabletopia, 50% off. So I don't know if it's subscription based uh, to play it. Everybody else is giving away for free uh, just to see how it works. But, you know, who knows? Uh, I don't know. Seems neat, but like I said, it's kind of a turn off by saying that you have to be of a particular occupation to enjoy it. That seems like a like a handicap that they're putting artificially on themselves in their marketing. Then we have Hydro Soakers board game. And uh, I think there's too much hydro and not just saying what they are, like squirt guns. You know, soak your your bad guy or whatever the thing is with squirt guns. Um, yeah, that I think the Super Soaker brand they're getting too close to with the Hydro Soaker and then missing out on the generic opportunity to uh, really describe what the game is and how it should play. There's also way too much artwork uh, on the board here and not showing uh, an actual uh, prototype. So uh, if people can't see what they're buying until you get right here, <laughs> then uh, I think that turns a lot of people off. Uh, they want to see what they're going to get and they want to see it in full, full glory. Um, that's a hard sell. All the acrylic pieces and all the other painted screen on uh, materials that they would be utilizing are going to be ex more expensive than uh, what you would get if they were cardboard. Maybe that's why they need $27,000. Uh, but you know, without really high prices tend to chase people away rather than make them buy in droves. Same thing to be said here, wanting $120,000. Um, first created, so there's no history here. You're gonna be investigating a disappearance and all that, seems to be anime themed. Um, so it's not bad in the artwork. You have uh, engineers and for some reason a fox person, uh, some goblins, so it fits within the the fantasy realm, um, but they're showing uh, not enough. <laughs> Definitely not enough. One thing, okay, so so they're, they want $100,000. If you ever looked at one of the big Awaken Realms or Cool Mini or Not or any of the big guys who make $100,000 in their first day out, their um, pages are filled with content of what the game is. So that's every component is highlighted uh, in a clean way, in a big enough way so you can see everything. And then they do everything they possibly can to show you how the game will play. And that's what's missing here. And that's why I say people that are, uh, people are chased away by the big numbers uh, unless they see giant amounts of stuff that they get for their money. And um, that's kind of the, the way that it runs and that's what's missing from this one could be a fun game it could have a lot of cool things but it's missing the big spread of value that you're going to be getting to get to those hundred thousand dollars and above numbers potheads uh is supposed to be a play on words i don't think this is specifically about drug pair people i think this is about people that grow plants so it's a play on a thing that might be confusing. Uh, and while it, it, it is a pun or it has some irony to it and all that kind of stuff, which is usually good, it may not be far enough away from the negative connotation of uh, the pothead stuff to where people can see that this is not a weed game. Weed games don't do much, but uh, nursery games, flower games, even the small ones do okay. So uh, this one's off to a start that's probably going to get funded, which is fine. But I think that maybe the, the, the name might hold it back from the people that would buy it for their kids. Because they, ch you know what I mean? Or to play with their kids. Uh, it, it's <sighs> The drug thing is not as popular uh, as, you know, a general game would be. You know what I mean? There are more people playing games of video games board games whatever then there are smoking pot so um it kind of yeah maybe in australia it doesn't mean the same thing but in the big market like the u.s 
where most of the money comes from, it might be hindered a little bit. Then we have yet another modular tabletop uh, game table system. Um, so Prometheus Unbound, which was Frankenstein's uh, subtitle in the Mary Shelley book uh, originally, it's supposed to be this Euro style, which means it looks like something that comes out of Ikea. So if that's your style, you don't want the uh, fancy wood that everybody else is using, then maybe this is the one for you um, to be able to pop in and pop out, depending on what fits with the rest of your furniture. Uh, seems to have a lot of the same stuff that you would you would get in a game table. Uh, right here, they still have a few left to go in this $750 range. And... Uh, that gets you some free topper panels and things like that. Uh, what else? What does it go up to? Free shipping as well. So that's something that they offer for another day. Um, and the uh, attempt is to have a mount uh, starting in September. So uh, $750 seems to be the cost, at least of the first table. Um, I don't know if there's any additional components or anything else that will go along with it. But it does have that more modern style. So that is different than what you find in a lot of the other ones that are available. Wormwood, uh, uh, Geek and Sun, and there's a few others that are out there. Um, maybe this fits your furniture better. And we have Proxy War, which is a strategy game about dictators, rebels, and greedy powers, which... Uh, you know, World War One, World War Two had a lot of this kind of stuff. Uh, the Afghanistan War, um, a lot of the Cold War, all of those things were affected by these proxy wars. And if you are interested in that kind of strategy, then maybe this will be a good one for you. It's not necessarily a war game in the sense with the maps and all that kind of thing, but you have the hexes and um, you can strategize more like the games that you play um in the uh, for training in the cia and that kind of thing has a little bit more of a feel there uh and it looks like all actions happen at the same time so that's an interesting deal um again if you're in real war you're not going to necessarily know when it, nobody's going to wait to take turns right <laughs> you're just going to keep constantly attacking each other in various uh ways and you're going to do what you can to to think ahead to where you think your enemy is going to be. So that part, I think, will bring an interesting mechanic to how this plays. Obviously, you need an opponent, so it's two to eight players, no solo mode. Then we have Monster Voices, which is a game about making voices up. So you're going to have various monsters that are going to get laid out, and then you're going to have words that are uh, provided for you to say. And then you're going to be the monster, and you're going to get points for that. So it seems kind of neat. The black and white deal uh, may seem a little bit on the cheap side, but maybe that makes it cheaper indeed. Uh, for $10, you get some temporary tattoos. For $24, you get the game. So that would be a first edition. I don't know. If there's going to be a second edition, maybe those ones will have color. Um, or you can color it in yourself. Give your kids something to do. Then we have a 3D print and play floor game about build and battle UFOs. Uh, so there you see the kids on the floor <laughs> uh, using the various terrain. Try not to leave these things on the ground, but you're going to be 3D printing them out. So not only do you have to have either an FDM or a resin printer, uh, FDM would probably be better because then you could actually print in these colors fairly cheaply. <laughs> um, you got to make sure not to, to leave anything to step on. So uh, cheap. You know, a neat way to have an alien battle. Now we're moving on to the more uh, RPG-related stuff. We have wizards, sorcerers, and all that kind of stuff. 3D printable, and they look pretty darn good. Uh, even though, I mean, I wish they would have shown more, but the way that the uh, robes flow and everything on this uh, lady looks pretty solid. And you have um, lots of flowy uh, materials and things that go along with it, so... Uh, I think they look pretty darn cool. Uh, various action poses. They're not just standing there holding you know, something. They have uh, some motion uh, going along with them. Some type of... Um, a little bit of storytelling. Um, 
This lady is, you know, predatory style, ready to attack. There's the lady I was describing that it was from her back uh, from before. And some type of windswept dancer or fire dancer or whatever the case that uh, brings them out to be. Um, yeah, some neat things. And this is weird because it's the same models, but it's a different campaign. Um, yeah, so I don't know. I don't know how one is different than the other. They don't look different at all, but there's two campaigns here from Miniature Evolution that are the exact same models. So whichever one you find, <laughs> uh, maybe they're in different locations. They're fulfilled in different ways, maybe. I don't know, but uh, maybe you check in with them on that. Then we got a big old pack of fantasy creatures uh, right here. So, um, yeah, we'll scroll down and take a look at some of them. There you come, pretty supported. Yeah, orcs. You got Skeletor looking fellas, demons. Uh, and then, yeah, see, Skeletor. And yeah, they would fit pretty well in Massive Darkness or any other places. They come in packs. The full uh, ABC pack for everything is $27. So, it's not all that expensive, but at least you can kind of set it to be which models you want or don't want and uh, go from there. As you can see, they got some pretty good detail, uh, especially on uh, that angel of death looking folk, demons, minotaurs, all that kind of stuff. So, so pretty neat looking for only $27. Looks like a, a pretty good pack. Then we have more demons. So... This guy from Miniatures Craze, as you can see, lots of wings and all that kind of stuff. Uh, early bird is $20. And you're going to get mainly demons. So the other one had some mermaids and all that kind of stuff. This guy is free, contemplating his next move on his sword. Uh, but you got uh, knights, hellhounds. Um, call it the ambush squad, but I don't know what all of that is. Uh, a very portly paladin, a harlequin uh, type of character, if that's what you want. Uh, and then, yeah, you get uh, some scenery terrain that you can utilize how you like. Uh, a couple of props. Yeah. Things you might need. And if you need them magneti magnetized, that's what you have here with these sci-fi miniatures. You can either get them already magnetized or you can get them in digital form. Uh, for yourself so you can set like this uh, individual up with a cyborg arm move it around uh, fully remove it change out the heads you know whatever it is that, that floats your boat uh, if you're gonna have a lot of you um, set of these that you want to keep mixing and matching to make uh, more NPCs or you just can't make a decision on what type of character you want or you're gonna be swapping out weapons all the time then maybe something that is already designed to have the magnets inserted into it will be less of a headache for you. Then we have a cool looking uh, pinup model, not pinup in the sense where they're naked. They're just uh, something for you to paint. As you can see, nothing too crazy about this young lady, 20, 120 millimeter, 75 millimeter, depending on what you need. Pretty good details. You got all these um, drone bots that she's either utilizing or uh, fighting alongside, so yeah, neat looking individual, looks like it'd be fun to paint. Then from uh, Merg Boy, uh, in that r kind of dark apocalyptic death exploration world, you have Soul Burner, the RPG. Uh, so, da -da 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 -da, you get different mechanics, uh, unique player class of Ash, a Fate Warden, some random tables and the setting of counter. Uh, so it seems to be more of a fire ravaged world and it's compatible with more boy and something called Necronautilus, which I don't have much of an uh, information on, but it looks like it is a space version of more boy. So I know I used to say more Borg all the time, but then somebody else said it correctly in Swedish and it just means dark castle, but yeah. I'm trying to do it right. I don't. I say Cthulhu instead of Cthulhu uh, these days. Uh, I used to say it all correctly all the time, but you know, sometimes it's just easier that way. But uh, try and give some respect to the Swedes. 
that created it. Then we have Bones Deep. So we have an RPG about crawling around the ocean floor as a skeleton. I'm not sure if the bone worms and whatnot eat you, but as you can see, this skeleton uh, has been rearranged into a fish. I think that is super cool. Uh, for 15 bucks, you can get the, uh, the digital version. And it's a really weird, interesting concept. Um, even if I didn't utilize the game itself, I think maybe it'd steal from it and utilize a lot of the concepts of it. So, yeah, it seems pretty neat. Uh, these dice, you can see them, and they have the really cool inclusions uh, inside of them for the, uh, the skulls and other things that are like uh, being stolen from the bottom. There's a lot of neat things that they threw in here as well as this really strange concept. Then we have the Pay What You Want Cyber Shop. This is a building to be used for your cyberpunk stuff. So uh, it's that modular kind of world. You can use it as whatever type of store or, or you know front you need. Um, fill it full of whatever things you think are cool. A couple of floors, more than one, more than two, whatever you want, you can make it. Uh, your type of thing. You can put a bunch of them together and make a mall. You can have like a weird floaty asteroid strip club. Whatever you want, you can make out of these uh, these pay what you want pieces. And you know, like I said, you pay what you want. So if it costs a dollar, it costs a dollar. Then we have a color version of a Beowulf for 5e. This is Trials of the Twin Seas. This is Beowulf Age of Heroes. If you don't know uh, the original Beowulf is one of the oldest written um, accounts in English of a, you know, a, a long epic, a, a saga, a story. And um, it's amazing. It has Grendel, the, um, the villain, and his mom that the King Beowulf has to defeat. And uh, I always thought that it would be a really cool setting to know more about. And uh, the Seamus Haney version, if you get the original book, I think is probably the best uh, translation. And they put the original Old English in there that basically just looks like Icelandic. Um, but yeah, uh, there's a lot of these uh, old school uh, epic adventures thrown together that fit within that kind of world. Where you have one great hero and uh, maybe it's their last uh, adventure but they're going to make it epic uh, and that's what has been provided here in this kind of function using the 5e rule set that you're probably already familiar with so tell one hell of a tale go out there and fight stuff then we can get a little more lovecrafty in here in acolytes of the crawling chaos six investigators four cultists two hunting horrors and four tentacles uh, these guys would be cool to be put in uh, your uh, Arkham Horror stuff because there is a lady that's a runner in Arkham Horror. Um, almost that same outfit. A couple of people could be in this uh, shotgun style. There's one of the Mystics. And you can find a butler. And then uh, Wendy Davis is in the core set. She looks exactly like that. Uh, and some other individuals. So there's always cultists to fight. And other weird things to have at so if you're playing Mansions of Madness, if you're playing Arkham Horror, you're playing any of that stuff, and you don't get the uh, characters you want, then you can print these guys out, and uh, it'll be a little better. And then for whatever system you want to play, we have some uh, problem-solving, story-driven, system-agnostic adventures. And um, you'll just have to look through and see the types that uh, they've come out with. She has a couple other adventures uh so there's not a lot of description uh, on each one and what makes them different and interesting. So it's more like, hey, I'm going based on my reputation. And then here's a little blurb. So, yeah, you can check out all the different adventures that she's providing. More power to her for giving it a shot. Um, see if it fits into the world that you've created. As it's set to be system agnostic, that means that you might have to do a little bit of work to... To get it together but um at least there will be a prompt and you know a couple ideas of where to go with the story and that kind of thing just to help you out it's nice to have uh 
some borrowed uh, help every once in a while when you're just not feeling up to uh, making a full adventure, you got writer's block, or whatever the case is. Then we have the Dice Free Dungeons Quick Start Guide, 40 pages of how to run an RPG adventure without any dice. So obviously this is not going to be compatible uh, fully with a lot of systems, so you're going to have to either use it or integrate it, but some people are afraid of using dice. One of my friends, she won't play anything that has dice. I don't know what it is that uh, scares her off about it, but uh, if you're one of those folks, then, you know, here you go. Here you got a way to still enjoy adventures and do all the fun stuff uh, just without the thing that bothers you. If you're going to be traveling under the earth, you're a dwarf, you're a gnome, you're whatever, then maybe you need some crystals. Maybe you just need some crystals to put around. If you're going to be playing Rhyme of the Ice Maiden, then uh, one of the subplots that's part of it is the collection of this uh, obsidian-like glass. And uh, maybe this will be useful for you. They come in a variety of shapes. Um, resin works pretty well uh, in this type of thing because you have all the straight edges. But if you had to use FDM, it's not going to be the end of the world. So uh, depending on what you're going to create, you can uh, knock all these guys out pretty fast. Um, yeah, even for your regular games like Kingdom Death Monster, there's a mineral deposit that these guys could be. Then we have the Lake of Abominations Hex Crawl. Um, the world of populated hexes is uh, what this is for. And yeah. It's a lot of different content, things that are thrown in there. Uh, a com you know, the compilation being a bunch of uh, supplements thrown together for you to go through this grid world and find all the adventures that are in it. Um, yeah, give it a shot if you like hex crawls, I guess. Speaking of the Underdark, maybe you need some drow that turn into spiders for 11 bucks uh, or $1. <laughs> for uh, just the right to print, but 11 bucks to sell them, you can get when legends fall. Yeah, spider queens, you get bases. It seems to be worth the, uh, you know, a look. You get uh, skulls that turn into spiders, brains that turn into spiders. So uh, something very much like the reanimator popping out would be pretty neat. Um, webs, all that kind of cool stuff. So yeah, man. Uh, I mean, it seems like they're giving you a lot of value for a dollar. Or if you're uh, trying to make some money and, you know, get some, some cash back for having your printer around, you know, a reasonably pr priced commercial uh, license, maybe you can sell some of these skull spiders. I do not know what Kagu or Kogumelos is, but it's a labyrinth of those. Um, 3D printable environment, which means... More mushrooms and things for the Underdark. Underdark all over the place. So you have some, as they call them, puddles, which are little pools that you might find. Mushrooms uh, of epic scale. <laughs> they can be trees. You get all kinds of things that you can throw together. So for not too much money, you can get yourself a really whole lot of scatter terrain and have a, a real epic uh, underground adventure this week. Then you have the dice advent calendars. These pop up a lot during Christmas. Uh, it's interesting to see them happening now. So uh, when is this actually supposed to deliver? This is supposed to deliver in November. So you would have it for Christmas. Uh, so yeah, then you got all 31 days. Pop yourself out uh, an interesting looking die, depending on what you want. If you're going to give these out as gifts, these are $61. Um, that's about $2 per die. So if you have all these inclusions and other things going on with them to make them extra sparkly and different, then that's about what you'd pay or probably cheap by the time you get to the end of it. Um, so yeah, uh, neat options. Then you got puzzles. This is Dragnar's Dungeon Puzzler. So you get maps, you get uh, 5e Pathfinder, uh, different material, and uh, crazy things to tease your players with and uh, ways for them to uh, drive themselves crazy. So, yeah. You got word puzzles. You got all kinds of neat and interesting concepts uh, thrown in there. Um, yeah, I know Deborah Ann Wall. She's always talking about what a, a good puzzle does for everybody and finding ways to make a uh, more tactile experience with the puzzles. 
And this is an interesting way of doing that for you because it just gives you something you can print out pretty quickly, uh, maybe with some scissors and, and create that experience for your players. Then we have a utility type of dungeon. This is Dungeon Coasters, and it is dungeon stuff made out of coaster material. So you can make the labyrinth however you want it to be and make it so that your drinks don't cause rings on your table. That's the concept. Um, so yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you could utilize other things that you put your... Uh, you know, or make your uh, dungeons out of. I've seen whiteboard coasters and things like that um, that you could utilize. This just makes it a little easier because it's all put together and you can spin them around and mix and match them however you think you need in order to make the dungeon work for you and reveal it as you go through. And whatever you don't use, stick your drinks on. Then for a pay what you want experience, you got frogs and birds. Birds and frogs. So you have frogs riding birds. And uh, I mean, spell casting frog types. So one of the things that is out there for you, uh, this is a pretty crazy looking uh, bird uh, from a more dinosaur perspective. It's like a thunder turkey of some form. Um, grung. And I think maybe in Pathfinder also, Pathfinder's got so many options, but the Grung are out there and uh, for 5e, and who knows, maybe that's what you're playing. Then we have Toons Legends, that is supposed to be a blend of game book and RPG, which I think just becomes a game book, which is a solo RPG adventure. And um, you have different challenge types that you're going to play as you go through. And you can play it on a uh, tablet or phone. So it's not just a book that you pull out. It's uh, more of an app experience. Yeah. So that could be fun. Being able to take it with you anywhere in line is a great idea. Uh, play some games while you're stuck at the DMV. $2, you got Zip Wars Terrain, which is a rules light war, uh, war game system. And uh, da, 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 da. I was going to see if they had any actual. Um, now it looks like it's just PDFs. I thought maybe there were some models and stuff in there. So, yay, if you want to uh, play a war game with somebody and you already got models, you don't know what to do with, uh, you can give this one a shot for two bucks and then you have rules to beat each other up with. And then the Age of Ancients line for Pathfinder 5e, whatever you want to play, this is Like Rats. So it's an adventure module, and uh, it's going to have a lot of rats in it. So there's that. Um, also, Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft has a rat world in one of the Domains of Dread. Maybe you can incorporate the two of them, make it work uh, back and forth. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, it looks like some type of infestation you're fighting against, which would fit really well into that world. There's some dice sets you can get. Check it out. I'm kind of through with rats, but maybe I would play something if you are going to have a really good reason for them to exist. Then we have the Arklander Zine. This is 5e compatible. Um, not really sure what this one gets you. It's part of an Arkverse, which is a universe with a different uh, spell system called Spell Forging. And... Uh, this will help introduce you. You got some red panda creatures. Um, yeah. So just random 5e stuff if you're looking for new worlds. One to check out. Swords and Chaos. Uh, inspired by works of Wagner, uh, Howard, Saunders. Okay. But a lot of the other ones were as well. Uh, it seems to be... Um, something closer to what Dungeon Crawl Classics has or what OSR is creating. So only seven classes, but they come with a bunch of backgrounds. Uh, a fair amount of uh, monsters and spells and things. So 200 monsters, 100 spells plus. And um, 20 bucks for the PDF version. So if you were looking for something maybe simpler than D&D or less streamlined, then maybe this will uh, be there for you. 
Uh, all the same stats, except this one includes luck. And corruption is a thing that and magic causes in your body. So if that's the world you're looking for, uh, you, you don't want to use 5e. You don't want to. You, you think that it's too simple for your group or doesn't have the right things for you. Or you just particularly wanted uh, a Conan style story story then maybe give this one a go then we have tokyo otherscape which seems to be doing pretty darn well this is a cyberpunk and fantasy game for city of mist and it is created by son of oak game studio which is the creator of city of mist so it's kind of an official storybook which is why it's doing so darn well this is like the cyberpunk finder <laughs> to their uh like their their Pathfinder has Starfinder, so this is their cyberpunk uh, aspect for City of Mists. City of Mists is more of a superhero style game, as it's been described to me. But it can have a lot of uh, other interesting, more modern takes. So this is a not a far-flung future, but not next-week future uh, kind of world to be uh, brought into it. There are... Ah, from the look of it, explaining videos and apps and other things to go along with it to help you get along. Some neat looking dice. Lots of colors, lots of interesting things. Uh, City of Mist has a, I think a, they won some awards for their starter set. It came out not too long ago. And I'm going to guess that they're going to have the same level of uh, quality and care put into this game's uh, beginnings. Then for more sci-fi stuff, we have the Tycho Starport with uh, all kinds of neat things that you can stick on there. Different billboards you can paint. Um, lots of different types of buildings. So, yeah. If you're into the future and you needed some buildings, here you go. You got a big bunch of cubes. That would also work well with that, um, that one pay what you want one we looked at a little bit long, uh, not too long ago. And... Yeah, so it seems to be that the future that people think we're going to have is very much old shipping containers <laughs> being reused. So different cubes, different sizes, different Tetris pieces for them all to be. That's going to be us figuring our lives out in the future. Then we have other things that will work well for the future theme. These are glow, dice, and tray but in a Tron-esque theme. So as you can see from these guys here, um, they look like circuit paths, but you know that you still see the, the pit pips on them to show what it looks like. And they do glow in the dark. Not that you really do a lot of gaming under black light, but maybe if you did, that would work. Uh, yeah, so it's a neat idea, neat concept. If you're going to be playing with all that other uh, cyberpunk and, uh, you know, far future stuff, then maybe these are just the right dice to uh, finish the job. Then we have Lore and Legends, which is Game Master Resources for 5e. And let's see what they have down here. Um, do 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 You get a bestiary, 100 new monsters, stuff for your virtual tabletops, 40 traps, 25 puzzles... 30 standalone encounters, magic items, adventure ideas, villains, NPCs, spells, factions, and even four subclasses to go along with it. Uh, yeah, so it seems to be pretty neat. Uh, different options are available. You know, the standard pricing tiers as you keep moving on. You can get more stuff, uh, personal video calls with DM Lair and all that kind of fun stuff to go along with it. I was looking more for what this in the subclasses, but it doesn't look like they're going to tell you right away. So if you are a fan of this content, looks like there's uh, a lot of people out there uh, already knowledgeable of these creators and, uh, you know, they're doing well. Then you need some more fantasy stuff or just random places to stick a MacGuffin. These are the hidden places, 3D printable scenery, and you get five different locations. Maybe they'll add more stretch goals. They look a lot like hobbitses, uh, as you can see. Crawlers, Lamashtu. Uh, they look cool. I mean, there's a fellowship, and you even get yourself a free sample. Um, 
yeah some neat looking buildings and um sacred or weird places that things could be stashed you're gonna definitely remember these as a player because uh, they're so weird even when they're not painted they still look pretty darn cool uh this reminds you of the inverted mountain that's coming out from kingdom death and uh yeah weird angel things yeah just yeah i have to talk over this <laughs> I mean, for seven euros, which is not that much money, I mean, you're getting tons. Uh, it seems like each vignette here is seven euros. The all-in package is only 43, though. So you get a lot going on. If you got the space, I don't think you're going to be very disappointed by having this go on. A lot of it is themed very similar to what you would find in the Lord of the Rings Hobbit type stuff. But uh, so are the games. So, you know, not really missing much there. And we have Mini Adventure Shadow of the Necromancer for first or fifth edition, whatever D&D you want to play. Uh, I'm guessing it'll work just fine with Pathfinder and Dungeon Crawl Classics and all that kind of stuff too. Um, for $199 though, you get 10 books. For not $199, for $10 you get the PDF of the module. So that's kind of how the, the place is set up. So Shadow of the Necromancer... As you can see, character levels 1 to 3, so it's an intro adventure. And, uh, yeah, fight the undead. That's the most fun. Uh, this seems to be, uh, here it is, uh, another version of the same thing this time. This is the 5th edition cover with uh, the maps and stuff like that to go along with it. Yeah, neat pieces of underground exploring. There was lots of underground stuff uh you have more care these are the 10 books if you were to buy the, the big dollar version um just keep scanning along uh, i remember the guy's picture from before he's created a lot of these uh, modules for previous versions of dungeons and dragons and um you know just finding ways to monetize on the things he's already created it's not a bad idea to keep creating more it's a good 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 use of time Speaking of good use of time, I hope you enjoyed your time with me. Uh, so it has come to an end because we're done for Tuesday. Probably still going to be a whole lot for Friday. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Hopefully it will give me a little bit of a break so I can get some sleep. Uh, it's 4 in the morning and I'm just now going to start the rendering and try to get all this other stuff out and still go to work tomorrow. If you can, like, share, subscribe, all that kind of business because... You know, why not make the channel grow? If you got ideas on, I think we're going to get close to the 777 subscriber mark. Um, what I should do for that. I was thinking 7th Continent, but maybe there's another idea that you guys might have. Um, that we could do something, make another video, or do something special. Uh, let's see what you got to say. Alright, otherwise you guys have a good one.